Okay, well, maybe we can get started. Uh, good morning and welcome to the 2017 Cider Summit Program. My name is Bruce Buffett, and I'm standing in for Barbara Romanowitz, who's the director of uh, CIG, and she'll be joining uh, the program in a couple of days, I think. Um, it's been customary at these things to have the director, Barbara, get up and tell you a little bit about the motivations for CIDR, maybe a little bit about the history, some of the things that we would like to accomplish, and some of the things that we would like you to get out of this program before we actually get started. It gives you a little bit of a, of a context for what we're doing. This is a program that has been uh, supported by the NSF. Uh, initially, uh, during the first few years, it was supported by the CSETI program. Uh, in 2012, uh, the CIDR program was funded by this, the FESDI initiative, uh, and that took us basically up until and including this program. And I'm happy to report that the 2018 program uh, will be funded by the CSETI program uh, again in 2018, and there are plans in place for uh, meetings going then after that. The, the, one of the overarching goals, I guess, of, of the entire program is really to understand about the dynamics and evolution of, of the planet. And the nice thing about the Earth sciences is that this task then draws on many of the dis different, different disciplines within the Earth sciences. We need to understand about the physics and chemistry of materials at high pressures and temperatures, so the mineral physics community is involved, uh, rheological studies. Uh, the seismologists provide us with a snapshot of the present day structure of the Earth in a variety of different ways, tomography just being, being one of them, whereas geochemistry provides us with a more time integrated uh, picture of the planet without maybe the same spatial resolution. Uh, geomagnetism certainly provides important source of information both about the planet today and in the paleomagnetic record going back in time. And for processes or phenomena that are close to the surface, geodesy has played a, an enormous role in actually transforming the kinds of things that we can, can do. And, and then geodynamics being the sort of tool that we can test whether these ideas actually, actually work. Now, one of the things that has happened as these different fields become uh, more specialized, it's become more and more difficult for individuals in the different subdisciplines to be really aware of what the other fields are, are doing. So, for example, it wouldn't be unreasonable to, to know that the mineral physicists, for example, aren't aware of all the latest developments in geomagnetism, and conversely, geochemists perhaps not aware of all the things that are going on in geodynamics. And so, really, in some ways, we perceive this as a bit of a problem. There's a paradigm uh, that uh, Barbara has used at all of the CIDR meetings that I've ever been at, which is the, uh, the blind man and the elephant, where you have these individuals all with their own particular uh, location, feeling the elephant, trying to figure out what uh, this creature is or what this thing is. In some ways, this is uh, an analogy for what's happening in our, our disciplines. Each has a particular perspective, each provides a, a view, but uh, interpreting it solely on the basis of that single source of information can lead to this sort of um, um, composite view of something that's probably close to the truth, but not exactly the truth. And the idea really was by having greater integration amongst the different fields, that we can actually convert this image of the elephant or of the earth into one that's more integrated and more holistic. So with that goal in mind, what CIDR really wanted to try to do was to create a more effective communications between the different fields. And so the things that we imagine that we're going to try to accomplish would be to provide an intellectual framework for integrating or multiple disciplinary effects in earth sciences and really overcoming the dialogue barrier, or the language barrier that exists between the different fields. Um, in some ways, we see this as a necessary complement to the uh, databases that are being developed these days. Things like IRIS and UNAVCO and a number of these other databases have really transformed the way that you can do science. But on the other hand, those databases really are only as good as the scientific problems that you're using to solve them. And we see CIDR as playing an important role in this respect. And maybe uh, specifically relevant for this group is that we see it as an opportunity for uh, a cross-disciplinary educational development. Even the biggest graduate programs in the country don't have the resources to be able to cover all of the different fields. And even if they do, uh, they don't have the opportunity to have uh, contrary points of view expressed and aired out. And so this is one of the things that CIDR allows us to do, and I think in the past has been very effective. I would say also that if this CIDR is uh, anything like all the ones that have happened before, you will develop a cohort of people that you'll interact with and it will benefit your careers uh, into the future, and I think that that's a real uh, positive feature. Okay, 
Well, just a little bit of, of background. When the idea of CIDR was first proposed, uh, one of the working models were these uh, theoretical or institutes in theoretical physics, like the Kavli Institute for Theoretical Physics in Santa Barbara. So in 2002, a group, Barbara amongst them, Adam Jawanski, Stanton Hart, and a few others, uh, visited KITP to just sort of get a sense of how they operated their programs. And it was clear that the types of things that were going to be suitable for the earth sciences were going to have to be adapted uh, for the earth science community. So this, the following year, led to a workshop at the Marconi Center nearby in, in Marin County, where the goal was really to define the scope and objectives of CIDR, uh, and also to put a proposal in to the uh, CSETI program, which co-sponsored the first CIDR program in 2004, really as an experiment. Um, I think that that first experience really turned a lot of heads. I think it was enormously successful, and it then launched the next series of, of programs that were all supported uh, by the uh, CSETI program um, at KITP in even years. So at the end of this period of time, there was another a community workshop where the group came together, decided whether this was working, whether it made sense to continue, perhaps redefine things. And this led to a proposal that was submitted to the FESDI program, which was ultimately successful. One of the uh, major accomplishments of that meeting, to some extent, was changing the D in CIDR from deep to dynamic. This sounds trivial, but branding's important, of course, right? But I think the issue really was that we would imagine that this was something that could be extended across the earth science is much more broadly than we had done before, and this meeting is an example uh, of that effort. And so that provided funding, which takes us up to and basically including this year uh, with some uh, cost over, some no cost extensions. So in 2016, there was another community meeting, again, decide what we had accomplished, how we were going to go forward, and in particular, looking at the funding sources for the uh, CIDR going forward. I had mentioned that the CIDR support for 2018 is going to come from the CSETI program. We have proposals and uh, efforts in other areas, but a lot of that is, is still underway, and we will let you know uh, through the website and other things how that develops. So it's a work in progress. Uh, I'm just going to show you just very briefly the number of people that were involved with the very first CIDR, the CIDR 1 steering committee. And the point of showing you this only is to emphasize that this is really a community effort. Uh, it involves a number of different distinguished uh, investigators from a number of different institutes. And really, from the beginning, uh, the CIDR effort has been a community effort. Uh, it was reorganized slightly uh, under the, uh, the CIDR II, slightly gov different governance structures. But again, the point was that it was uh, broadly a community effort. I'll just briefly show just some of the uh, programs that we've had in the past, beginning with the 2004 program relating seismological and geochemical heterogeneity. And these are the uh, original architects of that, of that effort. And you can sort of see the things that we've covered, including this program in 2018, where we return and revisit the original CIDR program um, next summer in KITP in Santa Barbara. With the FESDI program, it was possible to expand the program to include topics that the KITP group didn't perceive as suitable for their institute, and included things like uh, mountain building, continental crust formation and destruction, solid earth and climate last year, and then our program this year, subduction zone structures and dynamics. So from the very beginning, CIDR has really all been about interactions, getting to know the different uh, communities, understanding what the strengths and weaknesses of the different approaches are. I remember actually uh, this, uh, maybe we can dim the lights just a bit here. Taking a guess. Actually, I'm not sure. This says projector lights, I'm not sure. It's Anyway, so I guess you can see this. I remember this meeting, we were sitting around and we were talking about um, summer projects. What should be the, the research projects that we uh, undertake that very, very first summer? And the point was, at CIDR, there's never, we've never come into this thing with a preconceived uh, notion of what the research projects should be. It's always grown organically from the interests uh, of the people that are participating, and this is, seems to have been a success. One of the things that I might say, though, is to the lecturers, it's always a good idea, if you can, to include at the end of your talks just suggestions of what the challenges are, potentially roadblocks, and, and future initiatives, because this really does help see the discussion for the subsequent planning of, of the research groups. Sort of this sort of hard work generates big appetites. So you can see Peter there right in the middle. Um, but the point is that it involves a lot of, it doesn't 
involve a lot of social interactions. And again, I think the cohorts that you develop during this time are people that you're going to be interacting with for a long time, and much to your benefit, I would claim. Uh, point subject. No, it, the, she's, she's shadowed, I guess, it's fair to say. Um, but a lot of the uh, activities, the interesting part of it will really come when we start talking about research projects, and we've had a number of successful projects. Many of these have led to publications. There's opportunities to exchange ideas and interact. So it really is, in some ways, your meetings. And I encourage you to, as much as possible, throw yourself into this, uh, fully engage and, and benefit or derive all the benefits that this program has, has to offer. So I'll just mention a couple of things that were instituted with the FESD program, which are relevant for this program, uh, things that were added. So for example, one of the things that we started doing was adding this post or pre-AGU CIDR workshop. So this was an opportunity um, after the summer program to bring the students back and have them give us updates on the research projects, what they had accomplished. It also gave us an opportunity to showcase what the coming uh, program was going to be. We did this in 2016. At the present time, we're not planning on doing one in 2017 just because of the logistics, but our intent is to sort of reinstitute this as, as quickly as possible and possibly by the 2018 meeting. So again, if you're interested in these sorts of things, just keep uh, an eye toward our webpage, which I'll mention in just a sec. Um, there is support for the research projects that are initiated during the summer program, and this is something that we're going to do again. Projects that look like they're promising, if the, if the participants are interested in pursuing that, we'll provide support that will allow uh, the groups to sort of meet over the course of the year, and it, it really has made an enormous difference in actually bringing a lot more of these projects to successful conclusions, either presentations or publications and various sorts of things like that. And there was also support for working groups. There are a number of these listed here by various individuals, and a lot of the information that was collected during these working groups uh, are published on the web. Um, an important resource for, uh, the, for CIDR, and to some extent for this meeting, is the CIDR wiki page. You can find all of this on uh, deepearth.org, so we didn't change the uh, name in our logo, but nevertheless, all the uh, lectures from past years are stored there, so you can go and have a look. Advice or warning to the lecturers this year, remember, it's recorded forever, so your offhand remarks you won't be able to deny later, okay? <laughs> Um, but it's a really a great resource. Also, the lecture materials and, and, and notes and various other sorts of things are all made available on the web. And so this has been a great resource. Some of these have been viewed tens of thousands of times. It's really quite extraordinary. Uh, you'll find all of the, the reports from the working groups and a number of other activities. Dan Frost, in particular, is Dan here? Yeah, there is. Okay, Dan has done a superb job organizing this, and so in thinking, including things like CIDR publications, presentations and proposals, a variety of other things. And so a lot of this is based on self-reporting, and so we really rely on you, if you publish papers that are inspired by study topics or have presentations, to get in touch with Dan, let him know, and he will add that uh, to the web page. The more social media things, the blog and Twitter and other things, I saw an email from Goldie uh, earlier, uh, you should get in touch with her if you want to sort of investigate that. And there'll be a separate page, which uh, Doug will be talking about in just a moment, that's really uh, for the side of participants, it's not public, and so it's really where all the sausage gets made in some ways. And so it'll be a useful resource for you guys as you go forward. Okay, so just a, a little bit about what we're expecting or what we're hoping at least. Uh, the research groups that you form during the summer program very often will continue to function um, after the summer program. It's really hard to bring a project from, from a start to completion in four weeks. Uh, and so the addition of these research support has made a huge difference. And so we're hoping that a number of those take hold and actually go forward. Uh, more generally, the CIDR can actually enable new collaborations amongst senior participants, amongst junior and senior participants, et cetera. And we hope a number of those get spun up and they can often lead to proposals and publications and other sorts of things. These are the kinds of things that we're trying to promote. The other thing is it, networking is actually really important. We have run surveys both of participants after the meetings as well as uh, surveys that are poll the participants say four or five years after a meeting. And one of the things that they often emphasize is the fact that how important the networking is. They had colleagues that they could talk to about f fields or specific issues that they had outside of their own field, uh, lifelong friends and cohorts. And so this is really important. And again, I want to stress more than anything 
anything, that this is really your meeting, and it's up to you to make it as, as an interactive and involved as possible, so you should ask questions, participate, and be active participants, okay? And just finally, just a, a brief summary of some of the uh, presentations that have come out of this in the past, just examples of things. All of these were summer projects that were ultimately uh, then developed into projects, papers, publications. Okay, thanks very much. Um, if, there are any, if there are no questions, I'll turn it over to Doug to talk a little bit about the logistics.